SJC 12002, Ruth Levins and another v. Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation. Glasses on, you're all set to go. Uh, Mr. Chief Justice, may it please the court, my name is David Murray, and with uh, Mr. Schilling, we represent um, the appellants in this case. Appellants sought in this um, action to determine whether a statutory railway easement created in the mid 1800s over land that they now own was extinguished by events. <coughs> resulting from the bankruptcy of Penn Central um, Railroad in the 1970s. The land court uh, denied the parties cross motions for summary judgment and dismissed the action without prejudice, concluding that Massachusetts courts were preempted by federal law from adjudicating whether the easement had been extinguished because abandonment of rail assets and service was exclusively, according to the land court, a federal question that required federal authorization to be legally effective. And is your suggestion that that's, that's wrong, that federal authorization is not required for the abandonment of a rail easement? Not this rail easement, Your Honor. Oh. This rail easement is different from other rail easements? Yes, um, because it belonged and was subject to um, the 3R Act, the 1973 Act, that established the United States Railway Association uh, to supervise and to reorganize uh, the railroad services in the Northeast and the Midwest and took away from um, federal agencies other than the USRA um, the power to determine what would continue to be uh, uh, regulated by the federal government. And at least according to the United States Supreme Court in the uh, regional rail reorganization cases, what they could do with these rail companies, what they could do with as they wished. Is the crux of your argument that the final system plan, um, uh, which essentially did not provide for the use of this line, essentially obviated the need for any kind of an application uh, to the, uh, the agency for purposes of abandonment or discontinuance? Yes, Justice Spina, once that final system plan had been adopted by Congress and became effective. So, so the fact that the, before that point in time, the ICC had jurisdiction, right? Well, so before the establishment of the USRA, the ICC had jurisdiction. But the ICC jurisdiction was specifically removed by Section 304C of the 3R Act. Well, it was uh, removed from what, was it removed from everything or was it removed from what would become part of the Conrail system? In other words, if it, it, it was, the ICC jurisdiction was removed from these uh, 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 railroads and reorganization assets and given to the USRA and uh, <clears throat> it specifically says in section uh, 304C of the statute that ICC jurisdiction is terminated with respect to the assets of these uh, railroads and reorganization. So can you, um, could you summarize what it is that you think Judge Piper got wrong? Well, there are two things, Justice Botsford, that in our uh, uh, contention, um, just Judge Piper got wrong. First, he construed um, section 304F of the 3R Act um, in a manner that is inconsistent, in our view, with uh, the Supreme Court's um, explanation of what that provision meant 
in uh, the reorganization, re reorganization cases uh, decided by the Supreme Court um, in 1974. And the second thing that he got wrong in our um, opinion is that um, he identified the Federal Surface Transportation Board as the exclusive uh, um, agency for exercising the general powers of the federal government with respect to this particular um, disused uh, rail line. But as a successor to the ICC, right? Yes, yes. Um, the problem with that conclusion is that if you look at the authorizing statute um, of the STB, it says that the STB explicitly says that the, ex, uh, the STB's jurisdiction is limited to rail carriers. And that's a term of art that's um, defined in the statute. And it's defined as a person providing common carrier railroad transportation for compensation, um, but does not include street suburban or interurban railway uh, uh, electric railways not operated as part of the general system of rail transportation. And we argue that there are no rail carriers involved in this case. Yeah, but uh, if, if, if that's true, uh, the, the, it seems that the premise of your argument is that the FS, er, that the uh, uh, STB will always be stripped of jurisdiction simply by a railroad's discontinuance of a line. Um, no, that's not the argument we're making, Justice Spina. I, I it's know it's not the argument you're making, but it, isn't, the, isn't it the logical consequence of the argument that you're making? No, because the Penn Central and its ownership of the easement um, is in a special category. And that special category is um, constituted by all of the railroads in reorganization um, in the 1970s that had property that was not transferred to Conrail. And if you meet those two, uh, 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 flip those two switches, one, it was a railroad in reorganization in the 1970s, and two, the subject property was not designated for transfer to um, Conrail. But after the adoption of the final system plan by the Congress, the federal government's supervision over those assets that is derived from its general exclusive railroad powers. Well, th th that gets back to my first question to you. It really is the adoption of the final system plan that decides this case, it controls this case. Yes, indeed. We, we agree with that proposition. Because I assume that your general proposition is that it's perfectly appropriate for the STB to be the final determinant of whether or not a railway may abandon a line, because once it's abandoned, we lose forever the opportunity to make that a rail line again. So long as that rail company is a rail carrier within the definition the STB statute. In order for the STB to have jurisdiction, um, the person before So it, does it matter that, I mean, if Penn Central had not sold the property to the state, would we be in a different position? No, it would be in the same position. Because Penn Central was at that point no longer a, a rail carrier? That's correct. Okay, so you're saying that basically Penn Central became simply, I guess, a real estate company after the after Conrail was created. They're actually now an insurance company, as far as I can tell, but, but perhaps, they're perhaps similar not. to a real estate company. Okay, so basically the only thing that was of value was the real estate after Conrail took all of the better lines in 1970. That is precisely what, what we said, yes. So if it was within the Conrail system, you would not be here, or at least would not be prevailing here. Yeah, we wouldn't be here. And uh, if it was without of the Conrail, if it was, if it was outside of the, um, 
Well, let, I'll ask it a simpler way. If you had another railroad, quite apart from the 3R Act and the, and the railroad reorganization cases, but a railroad today that went bankrupt, company that went bankrupt, and um, thereafter abandoned uh, a line, <coughs> that would be governed, the, the disposition of that would still be within the power, the jurisdiction of the STB, wouldn't it, or wouldn't it? Well, I'm not a bankruptcy lawyer, Judge. Well, no, Justice I'm asking Watson, you really but, about but the, the, your rail carrier uh, argument. If that, uh, if, if, if the Congress took away jurisdiction from the STB for the circumstances that, that, that you posit, then it would be the same situation as the one well, No, I'm, I'm positing not, Congress doesn't act. If Congress doesn't act, then it's the STB that would have uh, uh, exclusive powers to regulate whether or not um, rail lines um, could be abandoned and rail assets abandoned. So, so getting back to Chief Justice Gantz's question, if, if the final system plan in this case uh, recognized this Newton branch line <coughs> as being in existence at the, at the time the final system plan was filed, and Penn Central or Conrail and then Penn Central continued to operate the Newton branch line, let's say 1988, um, then it would have to go, and then they wanted to abandon it at that point in time, it would have to go to the STB. Yes, it would. And, and if I may, I, I'd like to explain a little why I answer it that way. Because if um, um, the property, the asset, the rail line, um, had been designated for transfer to Conrail, um, the jurisdiction of the USRA, at least so far as it would affect this case, um, would no longer be operative. So the STB would indeed uh, uh, um, have the power to regulate that abandonment. So, but so that is not the case here. What are we to make of the fact that a petition was filed? And it was it filed with the, uh, the uh, USRA? The, it, it was filed. Well, I'm, and, and it's just been sitting there for 40 years. Well, um, there are two aspects of that. First of all, it was filed because it was filed at a time prior to uh, um, the adoption of the final system plan um, by the Congress. And what Section 304F says is that prior to the adoption of the final system plan by the Congress, or prior to its effectiveness, effective date. Um, you could not abandon, none of these railways and reorganization could abandon um, assets or rail service without USRA approval. But once the final system plan was adopted by Congress, according to the Supreme Court, there was no longer any need to seek federal authorization before <coughs> uh, disposing of an asset. So what's happened to that? Is, has that petition ever been administratively dismissed for lack of prosecution? Did anybody file a motion to dismiss it? Uh, um, what, what, not to my knowledge. It's just been Stina. sitting there. Well, It's an active case? No, it, it can't be an active case <coughs> because um, the USRA, after the adoption of the final system plan, had no jurisdiction with respect to that um, um, uh, petition. Because, as the Supreme Court says, you don't need federal um, uh, approval once the final system plan has been adopted to dispose of assets not designated for transfer to Conrail. Well, when you do you have a remedy, don't you? I mean, your client can file with the STP an adverse um, abandonment petition. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be one thing that your clients could do? I do not believe that um, my clients could do that, Justice Clarence. Why not? Um, and the reason is that if we went before the STB, the STB would say to us, who is the rail carrier? There are no rail carriers. 
and its jurisdiction depends on the existence or the status of a rail carrier before it can uh, 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 commence any regulatory uh, uh, proceedings. Well, when you, jurisdiction <coughs> is sorry, I didn't mean to. But when you, when you, um, whether at Judge Piper's request or whatever, you went to try to inquire uh, what happened. Did anybody say to you, "Why are you here? We don't have jurisdiction." Nobody said that, did they? No, because th these were not formal uh, um, proceedings. Well, we simp still. I, we simply wrote a letter asking them whether or not they had any records that contained this uh, uh, um, petition. Both the Department of Transportation, the STB, um, uh, those were the two primary. Uh, um, Didn't Judge Piper send you back there twice? I mean, I'm just surprised if you're correct that there wasn't somebody say to you, say to all of you, why are you here? Well, we weren't there in a legal sense, Justice Botsford. What, what we did was simply to ask these um, government agencies, the Department of Transportation and the STB, that's within the Department of Transportation, whether you had any records from the USRA. If, if we had found um, a record of approval of that petition during the period when the USRA had a, a, a regulatory jurisdiction, then it would have been an end of the issue. But because we did not find uh, um, uh, any records, or we were told by those two government agencies that there aren't any records uh, uh, that include this petition, um, we were left to rely on the Supreme Court decision as to what, in fact, would happen. Who, who filed the petition? Was it, was it the trustee in bankruptcy? Was it uh, Conrail? Was it Penn, Penn Central? It, um, as far as I know, it was Penn Central that filed uh, um, the petition with the uh, USRA. While it was in bankruptcy? While, while, it was, while the USRA was preparing, doing the proprietary work for its final system plan. And was there any effort made to contact the lawyer who represented Penn Central to find out why it was not pursued? We don't know who the lawyer is. He didn't sign the, pa the papers? No. We derive our knowledge that there was a petition from a USRA uh, a mention of that petition as being pending at the time that they um, filed the, the final system. There's no docket. No, no, we have not been able to find a docket. Do they keep a docket? Um, not to our knowledge. Um, all these uh, papers that belong to the USRA um, should have been, I don't know if they were, transferred to the Department of Transportation. And we specifically asked the Department of Transportation whether or not they had this docket. And we were told they couldn't find any papers uh, uh, relating to that docket. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Francis Cohen for the, um, the De Assistant Attorney General, Francis Cohen for the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Um, you've heard this morning a list of theories as to why under federal law there should be um, abandonment, abandonment has taken place. What is undisputed from this record is that there is no certificate of abandonment and the cases the federal cases, many cited by both sides, are clear that a federal certificate of abandonment is the touchstone of state jurisdiction. Right, so, how do you get, so how do you get one of those in the present circumstances? You're not a rail company. There's no rail company involved at all in this piece, in this easement. The, the, the proper remedy would be for them to go to the Surface <coughs> Transportation Board and file, as Justice Hines suggested, a petition for adverse abandonment. And then the Surface Transportation Board would either hear the matter or the Surface Transportation Board would say, we have no jurisdiction in these circumstances. And that would be a jurisdictional determination by the agency with the primary authority. But what we have here is a federal statutory scheme, and I want to clarify the scheme itself because 
It's been the subject of extensive writing by the federal courts, including the United States Supreme Court, um, which have articulated the three statutes which are most pr principally involved. The 3R Act, which is the Railroad Reorganization Act, which has been referred to for convenience this morning as Section 304. The Railroad Revitalization Reform Act, which is referred to as the 4R Act, which was passed in 1976. And then the 1983 statute, which is the nine, um, National Trails Systems Act. And as Justice Brennan details at length in Prisalt 1, the Vermont case that came up, those statutes articulate legitimate federal interests in this system of right-of-ways, and there are two legitimated federal interests recognized by the Supreme Court, the first being um, to create a national trail system, and the second being to preserve these railroad right-of-ways <coughs> for future railroad use. M M Mr. Murray uh, says that the adoption of the final system plan, or, or the acceptance of the final system plan, is determinative in this case because uh, it occurred before the creation uh, of the STB. Uh, now, why is that wrong? It's wrong um, for two reasons. First, because of the plain text of Section 304, and second, because the Supreme Court case that Mr. Murray relies on, the railroad reorganization cases, don't support the result. As to the plain text of Section 304, um, and it's reprinted in um, Mr. Murray's appendix to his original brief about five pages before the end. The Section 304 pr creates three periods relevant to railroads and reorganization and abandonment. The first period is the period while the final system plan is being developed. As to that period, which is confusing because it's in the very last section of the statute, although chronologically it's the first time period. As to section 304F, abandonment can take place before the final system plan um, becomes effective if there is consent by the USRA and, uh, um, and no state has filed reasonable, or the relevant state has not filed a reasonable objection. The second amendment under the 3R Act, Section 304, is the period after the final system plan becomes effective for the first two years of that period. During that time, there are two methods by which abandonment could take place. One was abandonment under um, 304A through C, which was a summary abandonment procedure and the other is abandonment under Section 304E, which applies to abandonment by Conrail. The final period is after the um, system plan, final system plan has been effective for two years, and that's under 304E. And uh, the Commonwealth's brief is incorrect at page 11 when it says that 304E only applies to Conrail. Section 304E is a statute that specifically applies, and it's in the appendix to Mr. Murray's brief. Section 304E applies both to Conrail, which is referred to in the statute as the corporation, and it refers to um, abandonment after the corporation, and it says the commission may, and it's referring to the ICC and continuing jurisdiction of the ICC, the commission may at any time after the effective date of the final system plan, authorize the abandonment of rail properties which are not being operated by the corporation or by any other person. But the, but the corporation is Conrail. That corporation is Conrail, so it can this, authorize but, but, but the But Conrail doesn't own. Or by any other person. And. I'm sorry, I've got it in front of me. This is abandonment by corporation. How can the corporation do anything with regard to a rail line that it, no, that, that it chose, chose not to incorporate within Conrail? Uh, I think the section refers to the first sentence, but um, <coughs> the second and third sentences clearly provide for abandonment not only by Conrail, 
but also by um, any other person. And the Senate bill which supported the act, which was from. Um, Sorry, is this E? I'm trying to find any other person. Because after, after the rail system to be operated by the corporation, meaning Comrail, under the final system plan has been in operation for two years. So this is focused on the rail system operated by Conrail. The first sentence is, Your Honor, that's correct. And the co commission may authorize the corporation to abandon any rail properties as to, with, to which it determines that rail service over such properties is not required by the public convenience and necessity. And then the commission may at any time after the effective date of the final system plan authorize additional rail service in the region or authorize the abandonment of rail properties which are not being operated by the corporation or by any other person. And you read, by, or by any other person to mean that this, this incorporates all of the rail lines that Conrail said it did not want? Yes, Your Honor. That they may be, uh, they must be abandoned um, in, in keeping with the ICC. And the Senate report um, in support of this bill notes that um, this section authorizes the ICC to authorize additional rail service or to authorize abandonments of rail properties not being operated by the corporation or by any other person. This allows a railroad to seek abandonment under the ICCA, the Interstate Commerce Act, rather than proceeding to seek abandonment of rail properties in accordance with this section 304B. Then what do we do with the U.S. Supreme Court's <coughs> characterization of a 3R? The U.S. Supreme on. Court's characterization at pages 116 to 117 of that decision, and, and it, the location of that dicta is important because it's in the summary right, of salient features of the act. It right. is not any part of the discussion or holding of that decision, except in this regard. What that case was concerned about was the, whether or not there would be an erosion taking by reason of the fact that the railroads that were in reorganization were getting Conrail stock, which was going to be devalued by during the period of the final system plan being required to operate railroad lines that might not be profitable. So, and so for purposes of determining whether a taking had occurred, the um, Supreme Court said we're going to assume that um, one of the salient features of the act is that it's more restrictive, that there's an erosion taking of the value of the stock. So I understand it was not part of the holding, that it was part of the description of what the statute says, but your position, I gather, is that when the U.S. Supreme Court characterized the statute as saying that railroads and reorganization are free to abandon service and dispose as they wish, the U.S. Supreme Court was just wrong in its characterization. No, I, I think what, I don't think the Supreme Court was wrong. I think the reading of it is wrong. I think um, that it's not clear from the dicta, but it's probably made clear by the context of the case that what was being referred to was the ability to apply for abandonment. Um, and uh, Because if a railroad line was part of the final system plan, which was the subject of the case, um, then it could they, not be They said be are abandoned. free to abandon service when they meant are free to seek approval from the ICC to abandon service? Yes, I, th I think that is the better reading, Your Honor, because I, I don't think there's ever been a setting, if you, if you read this statute, in which um, it was not necessary to seek abandonment. Well, but, I mean, I take it the argument is this is a unique situation that was created specifically for these bankrupt railroads that then became Conrail. It, um, it was created for that unique situation, but the notion that there could be abandonment, and, and uh, let me just back up and say that we don't have to be correct about this argument, but that it is an argument that should be addressed by the STB, which is not to diminish, I, 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 we believe the argument is correct, but the railroads, um, either have to um, apply in one of the three ways as regulated by the time period. What the Supreme Court was referring to was a time period and a situation where railroads could not be reorganized, um, could not uh, um, 
even apply for abandonment. Well, there's no railroad that can apply for abandonment here. There hasn't been a railroad no, in forever. No, there isn't, and that's the rail carrier's argument. Um, I, I don't think that's significant because, first of all, it would, put in, it would allow a situation where a railroad could simply transfer its assets to a third person and then have that third person say, well, I want an abandonment. So a railroad would then be de facto. Well, who applies here if it's the railroad that needs to apply for abandonment? You're saying the there, property owner needs the, to The property apply. owner may file a petition for adverse abandonment. And that is what was done actually, um, it, it, the ICC, uh, the Conrail versus ICC case, which is cited in our materials, Conrail, at that point, there was, it, it was a question about whether it was, in fact, a railroad operator or whether it was seeking abandonment for other reasons. The adjacent property owners wanted abandonment declared so that they could take the High Line down in New York City. But I, I don't believe there's anything in the statute. It's certainly a question that the STB has <laughs> not decided um, that, it, that an adverse um, abandonment petition may not be filed by a, um, a property owner. The, and the, the jurisdictional statute that Mr. Murray referred to, 10501, refers to rail transportation. It's not confined to just rail carriers. It refers to, um, it has exclusive jurisdiction over transportation by rail carriers. So that the tracks, the right of ways. Well, if there's no rail carrier, there's no transportation. There is, that's, the, but it is, um, but the issue of abandonment relates to um, track that is um, subject, that has been operated by a rail carrier, and the question is under the um, various federal statutes whether this land should continue to be kept within the federal system against the possibility of future operation by a rail carrier or whether it's abandoned. And but that, well, they kept what they wanted and gave it to Conrail. At, right? that, at that time for purposes of reorganizing those railroads, but the jurisdiction of the National Trail Systems Act is much broader and there is a, um, and, and, and you know, the STB now needs to decide whether this should remain within the um, federal system or whether it, it can come out and whether, and then the state courts decide the scope of the reversionary but, interest. But if your brother is right, this matter was resolved by 1976 under the 3R Act, which he claims gave, allowed Penn Central to abandon the property without approval, correct? He, um, the, w uh, his claim is that service on this line was discontinued in May of 1972. There was no certificate of abandonment. No, I understand that. He claims he doesn't need a certificate of abandonment because when, because the 3R Act said any property that's not transferred to Conrail can essentially abandon it without approval. If he's right, how could the National Trails Act have resurrected any authority? No, I did? don't. I th if he's right, the National Trail System Act didn't resurrect it, but that is a federal question which should be decided by the federal agency that has been charged with it and has special expertise and is entitled to deference. And, in and this you say the, the you say that agency is the STB? Yes the Surface Transportation Board. So can I just get an explanation from you of what you think happens next? At this point, I think the dismissal should be affirmed. I think the situation is very similar to what happened following the decision of the Supreme Court of Vermont in the Archdiocese of Vermont case. There was a dismissal on supremacy clause grounds, as is appropriate here, affirmance of the lower court. And then um, the, uh, the owners would bring a petition um, an action for abandonment, as was done there before the ICC, now before the STB, and there would be a federal determination of whether, in fact, there is continuing jurisdiction or whether it's been abandoned. In, in what happened in, in the uh, before the ICC in the Vermont case? In the Vermont case, um, they said that it um, that Burling, the city of Burlington, had acted um, within the National Trail Systems Act appropriately. Um, and the, so it wasn't, it was an abandonment, uh, it was um, an, 
um, there was an interim use for trails purpose subject to rail banking for future use um, as a rail trail. What the Supreme Court said in that case was that that was a taking and that the United States Supreme Court would, uh, the United States would be liable to the property owners for the difference in the rights that they had formerly possessed, the difference in value between the rights they had formerly possessed and the rights that they held under the National Trails Act. All right, thank you. Thank you.